Hello and welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. I've always thought that de Havilland made great looking aircraft. Many of their designs are some of the most elegant planes ever made. They just look right. Yes, de Havilland made great planes, but what I think they really excelled at was naming planes. This video is about the naming of de Havilland aircraft. I wanted to use the term nomenclature here, but for technical reasons I can't. In the beginning. To start with, de Havilland planes were named just with a model number, the letters DH followed by a number, which indicated the order they left the drawing board. This system started when Geoffrey de Havilland was working at Airco, until DH-10 was given the name Amiens. The single DH-11 was the Oxford. Next came the Akarpi, and then the Gazelle. So we have a couple of towns, and an antelope, and a small giraffe. Mm. These were all Airco products. The de Havilland naming really took off when Geoffrey set up a company under his own name. With DH-27, the Derby. There was also the Doncaster, and almost a Denby. De Havilland ran out of British town starting with D, and switched to animals beginning with D. The DH-42. Ah, the DH-42. For a military specification, what was needed was an animal name, starting with D, that would conjure an image that projected air power. The name department chaps thought and debated for weeks until they decided on a name to strike fear into an enemy. Dormouse. And its close relative, the Dingo DH-42A. Only three of these were made, most likely because of the poor naming choice. There were no more names until model DH-53, the Hummingbird, took flight. Yes, hummingbirds fly and the DH-53 was small and light too. DH-54 was named Highclere, a village in Hampshire. This was before Downton Abbey made Highclere Castle a tourist destination and seems a bit obscure, but put a comment in if you think you know the reason why it's so named. DH-56, the hyena, they don't fly but they do have a nasty bite. DH-60, at last the moth! Moths fly, and from above, with their wings folded, the de Havilland moths look just like moths. I think so anyway. Moth is a great name for a small sports plane, and was chosen for a series of aircraft that became famous the world over and are still popular today. The moth series were named after either their engines, or an actual type of moth, or possibly both. See if you can guess which in this list. Cirrus moth. Gypsy moth. Puss moth. Moth major. Moth minor. Giant moth. Tiger moth. Hawk moth. Leopard Moth, Hornet Moth, Swallow Moth, and Fox Moth. There was also the Tiger Moth Racer, which was nothing like a DH-82 Moth, but it came before its more famous namesake. In between all these Moths was the DH-84 Dragon, which was almost called the Dragon Moth. That was decided against to avoid confusion, so just Dragon, but they were still named after the extraordinary Moth, and not the mythical creatures. Probably. There were, in fact, a series of dragons. Dragon, Dragon Rapide, and Dragonfly. And the Comet. No, not that one. The Comet Racer. And yes, there is a moth called the Comet. Albatross. The beautiful DH-91. At last, a bird, not a moth. Though there is a butterfly called the Albatross, so maybe. De Havilland's first all-metal stress skin aircraft was the DH-95 Flamingo. You may have detected a theme in many of the names chosen for de Havilland designs, and the reason often given for the large number of moth and butterfly related de Havilland names for aircraft is that Sir Geoffrey de Havilland had a keen interest in moths and butterflies. In fact, to become a successful de Havilland design, the plane needed to be named after a flying insect. To demonstrate, consider this list. The Hound, only one built. The DH-66 Hercules gave uh, good service with its three engines, but the Lockheed version is the one people remember. The DH-92 Dolphin, all but forgotten. The Don, in service for two years. So in 1940, for a design that would become perhaps the most effective multi-role aircraft of the Second World War, the name Mosquito was chosen for the DH-98. The Mosquito's lesser known but better looking younger brother was called the Hornet. There were other great aircraft with equally great names to come. The Vampire, Venom, and Sea Vixen, a family of twin boom jets. These were very popular for British aircraft names of the time. The Comet Jetliner, the world's first. The Dove and the Heron, 
and lastly the trident. There could have been a jet dragon, but in the end the DH-125 became the British Aerospace 125, among other things, because there was no longer a de Havilland. Except in Canada. Land of chipmunks, beavers, otters and caribou. I've got an idea for the outro. ChatGPT, write me a song based on the names given to de Havilland aircraft. Okay, well maybe I'll put that in the description.